Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Changpeng Xiao. I will talk about a recent work with Ashley Montanaro. The topic is about quantum inspired algorithms for solving linear systems. Okay, as, we, as you know, solving linear system is a fundamental problem in machine learning, especially for quantum machine learning. Uh, you know, since the discovery of quantum linear servers, there appear many quantum machine learning algorithms. Uh, in the field of quantum computing, we have we we already know we already have many quantum algorithms for solving linear systems. For instance, in the sparse case, we have the HHL algorithm, and in the most general case, we can use the idea of blocking coding. Currently, it seems this kind of blocking coding idea leads to a very efficient quantum linear solver. Uh, okay, in the blocking blocking coding method, you know. If we want to use this method, we, have, we need to know how to construct the blocking coding of the matrix. And a very useful way is, is based on the QRAM data structure. However, as proved in 2018 by Evan Tang, if we assume QRAM, then actually there exists classical algorithms. that can also achieve quite a lot of dependence on the dimension for some machine learning problems. Okay, this means uh, for machine learning problems, even the exponential speed up reduces it to polynomial speed ups. And the problem we care about in this talk is how large is this kind of polynomial speed up. And in this talk, I will focus on this very simple problem, this very fundamental problem of solving linear systems and the assumption of QRAM. So the quantum algorithm is based on the idea of blocking coding using QRAM to construct the blocking coding of the given matrix A. And this random, uh, randomized classical algorithms. I think it's not nice to call them quantum inspired algorithms since they were discovered much earlier than Evan Tan's result. Mm. And the quantum, in this quantum inspired classical algorithms, this is our main result. It slightly improves uh, the previous result of Gilly, Shun, and Tang proposed last year. Okay, anyway, I, I will use a few slides to introduce this table in more detail. Okay, first, uh, let's see the first case. A is row sparse, yeah, just a row sparse. In, in the class case, if we assume access to the current model, then the complexity is just a linear at A's and quadratic on the Frobenius norm and the, also the norm of the A through the inverse. In the quantum case, if the column is sparse and we use a sparse access input model, then the complexity is linear in A's, the max norm of A and the spectral norm of A through the inverse. So as you can see, in this case, it is still possible to have very large quantum speed up since this Frobenius norm can be much larger than the maximum of A. How, uh, okay, in the second case, if A is column dense, it has a, the columns are dense, and the, now we assume the current model, then the quantum algorithm has complexity linear at these two nodes. Uh, okay, if we just forget this. Uh, sparsity S, and I mean, uh, let's assume it has order one, uh, then as you can see, the quantum speed up is just a quadratic. Mm. One thing, I think this is quite an interesting result since you know, sparse is not, a, is a quite a common case in many problems. And as you can see, in the sparse case, the quantum speed up can be just a quadratic. Uh, I think one interesting thing in this case is uh, both classical and quantum algorithms achieve quite a lot of dependence on epsilon. Okay, let's take a look at the output. Uh, in the sparse case, actually, the classical algorithm outputs a sparse vector, but you know, in the quantum case, it is a quantum state, so the outputs are different. So if we want to estimate the norm of the solution, uh, Actually, in the classical case, the sparsity of the solution is just like this one. This is the sparsity. 
So the complexity doesn't change too much. But in the quantum case, you know, we should use uh, something, some technique like uh, aptitude estimation. And uh, there will be a uh, epsilon here. So it is linear at epsilon. So, you know, in terms of the dependence on the epsilon, it seems the classical algorithm is better. Mm. Okay, now let's take another, the third case. A is sparse and the SPD. SPD means uh, symmetrical positive definite. So, <clears throat> classically, the complexity of the classical algorithm is linear at linear in S, the trees of A, and the spectral norm of A through the inverse. And the output, the output is a vector. In the quantum case, the complexity of the algorithm is linear at linear in S, the max norm of A and the norm of A through the inverse. The output is a quantum state. So, you know, maybe this is not a very special case. So if the trace of A uh, is very close to the max norm, max norm of A, then this seems that there, is, there, are no, there is no quantum speed up. Uh, but the good news is that, the good news is that in some special cases, I mean, special some SPD linear systems, there are uh, quantum algorithms that can achieve better dependence on the finish number. Actually, actually, it is quadratically better. So this is the square root of this quantity. So in these situations, quantum, quantum computers do still have, uh, quantum computers still have maybe quadratic speed ups. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, the last one is the most general case. A is dense of nature. Yeah, just like the most general case. Uh, this is our main result. Uh, it improves the previous result of Gini, Shu, and Tang a little bit. Uh, for, uh, just to improve the dependence on the norm of A, the norm of A through the inverse and the epsilon. Now, in this case, the output is not a vector anymore. It is a classical analog of the quantum state of the solution. So, it, it, yeah, it corresponds to the output of the quantum algorithm. Uh, in this case, the, if we use a blocking coding method, the complexity is just uh, linear in these two norms. So as you can see, in, in, this, in the most general case, we still have very large quantum polynomial speed up. Yeah, this is quite nice to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, now next I will introduce the main idea, main technical we use. I think it's quite interesting to understand this method. Yeah, the main technique we use is called the cut mass method. It was first proposed by the Polish mathematician, Stephen Katz in 1973. And actually it was rediscovered by Rich Gordon, Robert Bird, and uh, Gabor Harman in 1970. <clears throat> and this is a very simple method actually, and it also has a very clear geometrical meaning. And this will simplify the analysis of this method. Okay. Okay, first, of course, it is a method to for solving linear systems. And actually, it is an iterative algorithm. Uh, this is a mathematical, mathematical description of this scheme. If assume A is M times N. Okay, first, we randomly choose a initial approximation to the solution. Then for each k, we do this kind of updating. Here, a r k star, a r k star. A r k star is the r k row of a, and r k is just a row index. And uh, we choose r k with probability proportional to the norm of this row. <clears throat> uh, okay. Actually, it has a very natural, Sampling based data structure. I mean, this means uh, we choose this RK with probability proportional to the norm of the norm of the K, RK's row. Actually, this is uh, a property uh, used in the QRAM data structure. So it seems this kind of Cosmos method fits the framework of QRAM. And uh, a second point is uh, actually this Cosmos method is a stochastical gradient descent method to solve this linear system. 
here we can view the linear system as a least square problem. Uh, so if we use a stochastic green descent method to solve this kind of minimization problem, so at each step, we randomly choose the i, then we use the green descent method to minimize this cost of function. And actually, you, it's, uh, it's very easy to check that this, uh, this, this, uh, or this one, this, uh, this formula here is the gradient of this uh, function. So this Cosmos method is nothing but a stochastic green design method. Uh, actually, it has a, uh, okay, it has a very clear geometry. I mean, this x, xk plus one, xk plus one is the orthogonal projection of xk onto the hub plan defined by the choosing linear constraint. So we start from x0, then we do an orthogonal projection to the, this hub plan, and then do the orthogonal projection to another hub plan, and so on. This is an illustration of Cosmos method in dimension two. And you can see it gradually converges to the optimal solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then about this Cosmos method, uh, we can actually show that in expectation, this method converges to the solution after this kappa f squared, almost a kappa f squared steps. This kappa f is the product of Frobenius norm and the spectral norm of a 3 inverse. In this, in this paper, they call it the, the, the scalar condition number. Uh, actually, with this uh, result, you know, by the Markov's equality, after t, t is uh, kappa f squared and the log of one over f squared squared, after t steps of iteration, we will obtain xt, and xt is uh, just with high probability, this xt is uh, close to the solution we want to compute. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I think I want to say more about this Cosmos method since uh, first it is the main technique we use. And the second point is, uh, I think if you can understand this kind of method, you will know how to construct the quantum inspired algorithms directly by yourself. So as I will spend more, maybe two more slides about introducing this method. Uh, okay, first, look. okay. From this scheme, no. Uh, maybe let's suppose we choose x0 as x0 as zero, as the zero vector, then yeah, this is just a number of co coefficient. So xk actually is just a linear combination of the rows of A a uh, matrix from xk is a dagger yk, and yk is a k sparse vector. A dagger is the, the conju conjugate transpose of a. In this paper, given Xu and Tang, they call it, uh, they call it this yk, the sparse description of xk. So it seems this kind of sparse description comes naturally in the Cosmos method. Mm. Okay, since X and Y has this kind of relationship, so if we substitute X, XK is A dagger YK in the, into the uh, Cosmos method, then we, will, uh, then we will obtain a new iterative scheme for Y. We just remove, just delete this A dagger on both sides. And here this E is just the standard basis of the complex uh, field. Mm, okay. Actually, there is another explanation about this yk. This yk converges to the optimal solution of the dual problem of the least square problem. Uh, so actually, in more detail, let's focus on solving this linear, solving this linear system. And we care about the solution with the minimal norm the dual problem of this minima, minimization problem has this kind of form. Okay, first, if we use the stochastic green design method to solve this first problem, actually, this is just the Cosmos method. I think I said this in the beginning. 
As for this second problem, if we use a randomized coordinate descent method, actually then we will obtain the equation for y. Yeah, this is the connection of these two methods. <clears throat> okay, I think this is enough about this Cosmos method. Okay, now next I will say, introduce the main ideas of the quantum inspired algorithms. Mm. This is a brief description of the QRAM data structure. Uh, there are many papers about this QRAM data structure and uh, this one comes from this paper. Uh, yeah, with this QRAM, we can do a lot of things about this matrix A. For instance, we can sample the rows and for each I, for each row index I, we can sample the columns. We can also query the entries and we also have the information of the norms. Yeah, so there are a lot of information in this QRAM. Maybe, maybe it's not easy to build such a data structure. But, uh, but anyway, this is not the main focus of this talk. Now let's just focus. Let's just assume we have this QRAM data structure. Okay, first, in the sparse case, in, this is a simple case. If A is just a row sparse, we can actually just use this Cosmos method directly. Since A is row sparse, so this A, R, K, star is a sparse vector, it means the calculation of this inner product is not very expensive. We just need to use these odd S operations. And this Cosmos method converges after kappa F squared steps in expectation. So in total, we just uh, use S, odd S, kappa F squared operations. And yeah, actually this is a total this is the overall cost of this method. So this is just the Cosmos method, uh, except that we assumed the QRAM data structure. <clears throat> uh, okay, next, let's, okay, if A is dense, then the inner product is not easy to compute since we hope the quantum inspired algorithm has quite a lot of dependence on the dimension so the idea when it is dense is we start, we focus on the updating of Y first. Because you know, this is still very expensive to calculate. So the idea is that we use the idea, we use the multicolor method to approximate, to estimate this inner product. And we will obtain a new scheme for Y. And this expression here, it looks very complicated. It's just uh, use the multicolor method to approximate this uh, in a product. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Uh, okay, now the basic idea, the, ba the basic idea of the quantum inspired algorithm, when it is sparse, it has two steps. First, uh, we just uh, run, run this, uh, <clears throat> this new iterative scheme for Y. So uh, we just uh, do this, uh, this kind of calculations classically. And at the end, we will obtain a vector y t. So first we need to know what is t, how many iterations we need. Of course, this needs a proof. Uh, and actually we prove that t is just a cup f squared. It doesn't change too much. So at the end, y t is a sparse vector. Mm. Yeah, it is a vector we have. So in the second step, we use uh, x, we use this kind of uh, relationship to find the data structure for xt. Since uh, in this case, we don't want to obtain a vector. We don't, yeah, we don't want to obtain the vector xt. We just want to obtain a classical analogue to the quantum state of xt. So yeah, we can use some technical from quantum inspired algorithms to build the, this uh, data structure for xt. Uh, I think I will now introduce this part here since uh, this is just uh, some stand technical from quantum inspired algorithms. I think, uh, yeah. And actually another reason I think I want to say this is just uh, this step is first is quite technical, yes. Uh, but this is, uh, but the main cost actually, the main cost of these two steps is just a step one. So this is technical, but not but not very expensive to implement. And the first step is quite easy to understand, but yeah, it's uh, quite 
expensive. Okay, one more thing I want to say is uh, actually our idea, our idea of this kind of algorithm is very similar to the one given by Gin, Shu, and Tang. In this paper, they use a very general scheme of a stochastic green design, but we use our, here we use a very simple one that is a customer's method. And that's, this is, I think this is the only difference. Okay, now finally I'm making a conclusion about this talk. First, we reduce the gap between quantum and quantum inspired classical algorithms for certain linear systems. And we also realize in the sparse case, the quantum speed up can be just a quadratic. I think there is one more one interesting, one interesting, interesting problem that deserve to focus on in the near future. Since you know, quantum inspired algorithm, it has quite a lot of dependence on the dimension. This is quite nice, but you know, the dimension information is usually hiding in the Frobenius norm. So it means that this, it means that the country is a quantum inspired algorithm. Algorithms are applicable, I think applicable to the low rank systems. So to improve their performance, it's nice to know how to reduce the dependence on the Frobenius norm. Maybe we can try some generalized customized method I hope so. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.